Good morning, y'all. Happy Sunday. It's great to see you. My name is Kenny Wiley, and I'm one of the head greeters here at Friends Congregational Church, UCC. We're so glad, whether you are a first-time visitor, long-time member, that you decided to join us this morning for worship. Um, you can find the worship bulletin. You can download that. Go to the Facebook post or our church website to find the link to that so you can follow along. And please, whether you're watching on uh, Facebook or on YouTube, comment interact with us, and if you are a first time uh, visitor, let us know in the comments so that we can greet you and follow up with you afterward. Again, it's a joy to have you in worship. We're excited, and uh, come on in to friends. Please join me in the call to worship that you'll find in the worship guide for today's service. We have been called in these peculiar days to face into God's gracious way of living and to walk into these new days of our ministry. But this is a new day and Christ is sharing freedom with us. This is a day to put aside all fear, to leave doubting behind, and to take courage in God's loving call.
Shall we pray? God of the ancient ones, God of our ancestors, God who knows humanity, help us persevere in these trying times. Help us to remember that all things change in season, and this is a long season, but it will pass. These difficult times will come to an end. For now, O Spirit of life, help us to breathe deeply into your love, into your peace, and into your call for justice. May we know your presence is with us now and always. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I'm Elizabeth Bainick, and this is Rachel Bainick, and we want to welcome you to the Friends Congregational Church online worship service. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, and in the words of the UCC, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. We started coming to Friends actually, well, I started coming before I brought Elizabeth with me because she was still living in Dallas, but uh, I started coming to Friends after Pastor Dan came and spoke at a Queer Aggies event. Um, I had a really bad experience in my previous church, and so I was looking for a church home, and I didn't really know if there was a home for queer people like me. And luckily, I met Dan, and he brought me into the fold, and then I was able to bring Elizabeth with me, so... Yeah, I grew up in a in the church of knowing that God is fear and learning that God is love was something that I needed. In fact, the first time I attended church, I cried. Um, we moved up to Iowa two year, years ago. Two years ago, and now that church or church is online, we attend as much as we can. Um, we just really miss our friends' home and the congregation there and the warmth that's provided to everyone and anyone who enters, no matter who you are, where you are in life's journey. We hope you know you have a really special place to worship. And at this time, we'd like to invite our children to get close to the screens at home for the children's message. everybody. Will you help me say that? On the count of three, let's say good morning. One, two, three. 
Good morning. I want to do a little show and tell with you this morning. I thought I would show you my guitar. This is one of my favorite things. I have had this guitar since probably longer than you've been alive. And I love to play it. I'm not the best guitar player in the world, but it sure is fun to play. Something about this guitar though, it's got all these strings. And if I put my hand on the neck, this is the neck of the guitar, and then put my fingers on the strings, it can make some beautiful sounds. It can make some sweet sounds. But if I don't put my hand on the neck and my fingers on the strings, then it kind of sounds messy. If the strings do what they want all by themselves, it's kind of a mess. So what I want to tell you today is that these strings, they're kind of like a family. Jesus tells us that whoever does the will of God whoever loves each other, the way that God wants us to love each other, that those people, they're his sister, his brother, his mother, his family. So let's look at these strings today and imagine that each one of these strings is one of our family members. Maybe this string right here, that's our parents. Could be our mom, our dad, it could be our moms, it could be our dads. This string right here, maybe that's one of our siblings. Maybe this is our sister. This string right here, that could be another sibling. Maybe this is our brother. Imagine that this string here, well, that's our cousins right there, that string. This one here, let's say that's our aunts and uncles. And this last string, this is our grandparents. And here we have, with all these strings, our family. Now, if I take my hand off of the neck and my fingers off the strings, and I let all these family members do whatever they want, and they stop paying attention to each other, and they start getting kind of selfish, and they stop being kind, and they stop sharing, and they forget to love each other, what do you think they're going to sound like? Let's find out. Mm, mm, I don't like that. But if I try to help this family out, remind them of what the will of God is, that they love each other, maybe things would be different. So if I take my hand and put it on the neck and my fingers and put them on the strings, helping out these family members, and they start noticing each other, they stop being so selfish, and they start to share with each other, and they start to be kind to each other, and they start to really love each other, it'll sound a little different. Yeah. <clears throat> How good to be a family world for you and me, sisters, brothers, the family of God. That's nice. Maybe you can sing with me at home. Maybe you can get your family at home to sing with you. How good to be a family. God has made this world for you and me, sisters, brothers, the family of God. Would you have a prayer with me? Repeat these words after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for the gift of family. And thank you for reminding us 
that we all belong. Amen. In the assurance of forgiveness, let us humbly come before God together, confessing our sins. Our participation in racism, our privilege based on racism, and our perpetuation of racism. God the Liberator, you freed your people from slavery in Egypt, yet the legacy of slavery deforms our lives today. God the Beloved, you prayed that all would be united in your love and service, yet the divisions among us rend your body. God the Spirit, you inspire us to live peaceably with all, yet the stain of genocide and internment mars our striving for justice. We have harmed one another and the earth through negligence, greed, and self-interest. Have mercy on us. We have failed to condemn discrimination that leads to unrest. Have mercy on us. We have decried violence while overlooking inequity and frustration from which it rises. Have mercy on us. We have practiced injustice for economic gain and have oppressed others to make a false peace. Have mercy on us. We have sought comfort in advantage for ourselves at the cost of injustice for others. Have mercy on us. We have welcomed solace over conflict and ignored the cries of those harmed by our comfort. Have mercy on us. We have grasped for this world's goods and been arrogant toward those who have little. We have not shared the good things we have been given and blamed the poor for their poverty. We have been fearful and distrustful of those who are different from us. We have divided ourselves from others and refused to listen to or believe their experience. Have mercy on us. We have been indifferent to the pain and suffering of our siblings and cousins. Have mercy on us. We have held in contempt those who need our help and not loved them with our whole hearts have mercy on us. We have been self-satisfied in our privilege and denied our oppression of others. Have mercy on us. We have preferred order over justice and isolation over the struggle for peace. Have mercy on us. We have quietly held good intentions and kept silent the message of reconciliation. We have failed to act with courage for the sake of love. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Grant us courage and conviction and strengthen us to love others who are unlike us. May God holy and undivided make us compassionate in our actions and courageous in our works that we may see Christ's beloved community in our own day. Amen.
Beloved community, as we are gathered together for worship, let's share peace with one another. Let us know that you're here with us by sharing peace in the comments section. And the peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. For 98 years, the United Church of Christ's Back Bay Mission in Biloxi has served our marginalized neighbors on the Gulf Coast, providing showering facilities, access to online job searches, a place to socialize, and personal hygiene kits. Friends Church has set a goal of collecting at least 100 hygiene kits to donate to Back Bay Mission. Go online and find Team Friends Back Bay Hygiene Kits on Amazon. Choose and donate your items there, and they will be delivered to the home of Justice and Missions Committee Chair Andrew McNeely. At the end of this month, all of the donated items will be brought to Friends Church where we will assemble the kits while being physically distanced, of course. A volunteer will then deliver them at no cost to Back Bay. The Social Justice Class invites you to help support the local immigrant community by donating face masks and diapers, sizes 4 to 6. Collection of these items will benefit the members of Santa Teresa Catholic Church in Bryan. A no-contact drop-off of donated items can be made at the home of Kelly Wellman and Nancy Birch, 215 Lee Avenue in College Station. For more information, contact Kelly Wellman. Friends Church and our neighbor church, Peace Lutheran, are working together to distribute food from the Brazos Valley Food Bank every Friday this summer. You can volunteer between 3 and 7 p.m. Contact Ann Worley for more information. This week, we're checking in with each other and sharing our prayers at noon on Monday and Friday. Check for an email from the church those mornings for the Zoom link to join us. All are welcome. This Tuesday, July 14th at 11.30 a.m., the Fabulous at Any Age group will meet on Zoom. This informal gathering of friends folk is open to anyone and everyone, and you'll be sure to get to know your church family better. For more information, contact Linda Coates. On Wednesday night, July 15th, gather with us for a midweek service of prayer and communion at 6.30 p.m. online. An email from the church will go out that day with the Zoom link to join. Morning Manna is an adult Bible study that meets at 10 a.m. Sundays on Zoom. This month, the Morning Manna class is reconnecting and bringing ideas for what to study over the coming weeks. Contact Associate Pastor Trent Williams for the Zoom link to join. Are you looking for a healthy space to process current events and talk about justice issues with your friends, church, family? Try the Social Justice class at 10 a.m. Sunday mornings. The group is learning from each other and finding their knowledge gaps on all the things happening in our community and the world. Contact Jackie Womack for the Zoom link to join. This senior pastor has three months of sabbatical leave, and I'll be taking one of those months here in a few days. Should you have a pastoral care need while I'm away from July 15 to August 16, please contact Associate Pastor Trent Williams. Our Hebrew scripture reading for today comes from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. Just as the rain and the snow come down from the sky and don't return there without watering the earth, making it conceive and yield plants, and providing seed to the sower and food to the eater. So is my word that comes from my mouth. It is not returned to me empty. Instead, it does what I want and accomplishes what I intend. Yes, you will go out with celebration and you will be brought back in peace. Even the mountains and the hills will burst into song before you. All the trees of the field will clap their hands in place of the thorn, the cypress will grow in place of the nettle, the myrtle will grow. This will attest to the Lord's stature, an enduring reminder that won't be removed.
My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand on the ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, Oh, may I then in him be found, Dressed in his righteousness alone, For less to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, All other ground is sinking sand. The ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. This morning, as we continue in our sermon series to the Gospel of Mark, a word about family from Jesus. Mark's Gospel, the third chapter, picking up where we left off at the 31st verse. Hear these words. His mother and brothers arrived. They stood outside and sent word to him, calling for him. A crowd was seated around him, and those sent to him said, Look, your mother, brothers, and sisters are outside looking for you. He replied, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Looking around at those seated around him in a circle, he said, Look, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother, sister, and mother. This is the word of God for the people of God. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Shall we pray? Our most generous God, we thank you for the beauty of this day that you call us into with blessings and challenges to lead us. We pray now that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth will be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Do for your own... Blood is thicker than water. Take care of your own kind, your own kin. These notions of loyalty to family are not lost on Jesus. Jesus is a Jew in antiquity. Dedication to family and tribe resonates deeply with him. But here Jesus says that what holds a family together is not name, lineage, blood, betrothal, or background. One's kind and kin are defined and held together, Jesus says, by a commitment to something bigger than the cultural virtue of looking out for one's own. One's kind and kin are defined by and held together by a commitment to doing the will of God. One of my favorite movies is Remember the Titans. It's yet another one of the classic films that these quarantine times have allowed me to introduce to my children. Remember the Titans is based on the true story of a high school football team in Alexandria, Virginia in 1971. 
T.C. Williams High School had an all-white football team coached by an all-white staff, but suddenly black students were suiting up to practice with their white peers on the football field, and an African-American coach, Herman Boone, portrayed by Denzel Washington, would become the head football coach, leaving Bill Yost, portrayed by Will Patton, the presumptive shoe-in for the head coaching position who was white as the assistant coach instead. Racial tensions are high, but the football players quickly learn that their commitment to the game means that they must dig in and support each other on the field. This realization is no more evident than in the friendship that forms between one of the white football players, Gary Bertier, and one of the black football players, Julius Campbell. Gary and Julius are leaders that their respective white and black peers look up to on the field and off. And the two athletes hold each other accountable when it comes to their mutual commitment to the game. The accountability comes to a head when Julius confronts Gary about Gary's failure to call out one of the white offensive linemen who Julius notices is intentionally stepping aside to let defensive tackles swoop in and smother the running back because that running back is black. Gary is humbled. He realizes that his failure of leadership is because of his blind devotion to whiteness, to letting people who look like him get by with not protecting people on the football field who don't look like him. He realizes that a true commitment to the game requires a sacrifice of pride and privilege, a sacrifice of his former notions of kind and kin. Team captain that he is, Gary confronts the negligent white football player and kicks him off the team. The running back position is suddenly restored to protection, and the titans of T.C. Williams High just keep on winning. Off the field, Gary and Julius become kin. When Gary introduces Julius to his mother, she doesn't know what to do with this tall, young, African-American man standing in her living room. Julius just hugs her, picks her up off the floor in that embrace. Gary and Julius are siblings not merely out of a commitment to the game that brought them together, but out of the devotion that they have for each other and their teammates that being committed to playing football required of them. One of the best scenes in the movie happens after Gary has been in a terrible car accident. He's in a hospital room, paralyzed from the waist down. His mother coaches the whole football team. They're in this waiting room, but when Julius walks in, his mother tells Julius that he is the only person that Gary wants to see. When Julius walks into Gary's hospital room, there's a nurse standing next to Gary, and when she sees Julius in the doorway, she quickly says, only kin's allowed in here. And without flinching, Gary says to the nurse, Are you blind? Don't you see the family resemblance? That's my brother. They said, Look, Jesus, your mom, your brothers, your sisters, they're outside looking for you. And Jesus says, My mom and my siblings. And looking around at those seated around him in a circle, he says, Are you blind? Can't you see the family resemblance? Whoever does God's will is my brother, sister, and mother. John Dominic Crossan is a New Testament scholar and a historian of early Christianity. Crossan points out how we often mention that Jesus was a Jew, but we seldom examine his Jewishness and what that meant to him and what it meant for his ministry See, in ancient Judaism, loyalty to family was sacrosanct. A family's name depended on sticking together, taking care of their land and property, and leaving a legacy to the next generation of kin. And you took care of your own. If hard times fell on someone in your family, you provided for them. And family was determined not just by name, but by tribe. And that's as far as it went. You stuck with your own and you took care of your own. That was how you got by in life. And to not take care of your own kind and kin was among the most anti-Jewish things that you could do. Jesus appreciated this. That commitment was sacred to him. 
But one day, when Jesus was on a mountain, surrounded by thousands of people who were hanging on his every word, he stood up and preached a sermon that expanded the concept of who you are committed to. He said, not just your family member, not just someone in your tribe, if a neighbor comes up to you and takes your coat because they are in need, you give them your cloak also, this neighbor. See, we read that Bible verse from the Sermon on the Mount from a 21st century Western world perspective, and we think, ah, the lesson is to be charitable, to not just give the local food pantry the canned goods we don't eat, but to give the good stuff that we would probably gladly eat ourselves, to give till it hurts, as we sometimes say in church, stewardship drives. And yes, that message is there, but the bigger point Jesus is making is about the who not the what. It's not just what you commit yourself to do, but to whom you are committed. See, Jesus was all about family, but family would no longer be determined by just me and mine. Family for Jesus and all who follow him would be determined and held together by a commitment to doing the will of God. And that will of loving kindness and social justice, and compassionate empathy, and reconciliatory forgiveness, and humble acts of service would not be limited to blood relatives and to the people in your tribe, but it would be extended, extended to your neighbor, no matter who they are or where they come from. And when Jesus asked, who is my neighbor? When he was asked that question by someone in the crowd, Who is my neighbor? Jesus tells that story in response. He tells that story about the man beaten and left for dead on the road to Jericho and about those two upstanding citizens who walked by that person left for dead and about the one person who did stop to help him being a Samaritan, a foreigner, helping the man by giving all that he could and more to nurse him back to health. And Jesus flips the question around that he was asked, and he asks to the crowd. Now, who was more of a neighbor in this story? And the answer was, of course, the Samaritan. And Jesus says, yeah, go and do that. Go and do likewise. Don't waste God's time by asking who your neighbor is. Go and be a neighbor. Don't squander the will of God by scouring the rolls until you're satisfied with who's left to serve. Just be a neighbor. Be a neighbor by intentionally, empathetically looking at others as your neighbor. Recognize the resemblance that you have with others who might not look like you, but to whom you are tied as kin. Even when he was threatened with death and public shaming on a cross, Jesus was widening the welcome strengthening the family, looking down from the cross at his mom and one of his disciples and saying, hey, mom, that's your son. Hey, you, disciple that I love, that's your mom. Y'all are kin. Don't ever forget that. And here we are, beloved community, at the foot of the cross, In an age where ICE is saying that if a school or university goes exclusively online and you are not a U.S. citizen, that you must leave. Here we are. In an age that viscerally defends the preservation of monuments that glorify the Confederacy and that were put in place to say to black and brown people, you do not belong here. The gospel message of Jesus Christ, your faith and the words that flow from it and the actions that come from it, they have something to say here. We follow a Savior who is deeply committed to family. And family never lets its members forget that they belong. And we are all members of the family of God. We are all kin. On Thursday, the youth group put on their masks and work gloves and spent a few hours doing landscaping and cleaning up a work site for Habitat for Humanity. We trimmed and cleared out brush, cleaned out sheds, picked up trash. The youth group did this for a family that will soon move into that home. 
move into that neighborhood and start the next chapter of their life. Now, on the surface, it might seem like a simple good deed, a nice service project. But as I think about Jesus' family values, as I think about Jesus saying that anyone who does God's will is his family member, As I think about Jesus saying that the way one inherits eternal life is by being an unbiased, unconditional neighbor. As I think about Jesus saying, as surely as you did it for one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. As I think about the gospel of Jesus Christ, I look at what the youth group did as a faithful, necessary act of welcome that says to a family of people they may never meet, you matter You are important, you belong, and we are kin. Beloved community, the world will say, do for your own. Take care of your own kind. When it comes to the preservation of your life and keeping your house in order, only kin's allowed in here. But we worship a God who says, my house will be a house of prayer for all people. And if the age of this global pandemic has taught us anything about church, it's that the walls make no difference. Everyone can come in here. All are welcome. As we follow a Savior who says to do God's will of loving kindness and social justice and compassionate empathy and reconciliatory forgiveness and humble acts of service, And to share that goodwill like a farmer scattering seed all over the place and leaving the rest up to God, we start to get it. It's about just giving and sharing and being a neighbor because we are kin. And we are sustained by the indwelling of God's Holy Spirit that is dancing and burning in our hearts with an urgent reminder that we are kin. No matter how fearfully we squirm against that spiritual truth, there it is, we are kin. Male and female and gender non-binary, we are kin. Christian, Muslim, Jew, pagan and atheist, we are kin. Liberal and conservative, we are kin. Optimist and realist, we are kin. Citizen and immigrant, we are kin. Old and young, we are kin. We belong to each other like family and we need one another to survive. Nothing is more heartbreaking than feeling like you don't belong. And deep down or right there on the surface, we're all just searching for a sense of belonging. We all share this in common. We are kin. Can't you see the family resemblance? Thanks be to God. Amen. As we receive today's offering, may we remember all of the ways in which God has entered our lives. May we be grateful and now share out of that gratitude.
prayer of dedication that we have in our worship guide. Let us pray together. Gracious God, filled by your generosity to us, may we be generous to others. Accept from us these gifts as we commit our lives to you and the world that you have placed in our care. Amen. Wherever we are right now, we come together in prayer. This is a time for this community of faith to share in our joys and our concerns. And so I invite you to share your prayers, whatever they may be, in the comments section. Whether you're watching with us on Facebook or YouTube, we're here for you. Share your prayers. I'm gonna guide us through a time of prayer, inviting us to first share our prayers of concern and then our prayers of joy. But however you would like to share, please do it at this time. Let us pray. Almost loving and gracious God, meet us where we are, we pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit and be with us. As Jesus is friend to all, console us with that friendship right now as we join our hearts and minds in prayer across this gift of technology that you give us. In spite of this global pandemic, we are united. And so God, hear now the prayers of concern for this community of faith. Loving God, our comfort, as we continue to type our prayers together, we move to a time of sharing joy, knowing that concern might still be there, and that's okay, it can continue to come. But we mix our prayers of concern and joy, knowing that you hear it all. And so, oh God, at this time, hear our prayers of thanksgiving, our prayers of joy. God, you speak to us in a still, small voice, and we thank you for being with us as we've shared these prayers of joy and concern. And we now unite our hearts in prayer, sharing the words that Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yeah. 
friends, our worship is ended and now our service begins. So now go into the world. The Lord bless you and keep you and God's face shine upon you and grant you grace. Grace that you would never sell yourself short, that you might risk something big for something good. Grace enough to realize that this world is now too small for anything but truth and too dangerous for anything but love. And so may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hands and work through them. And may God take your hearts and set them on fire. Go in peace. Amen.